Greetings my dear friend. Have you ever wondered how a simple coin in your hand can help us understand the complex yet incredible world of quantum computing? Well, get ready. You're about to dive into it right now. So what does this coin have to do with quantum computing? Let's say for the sake of this demonstration that the head that you see represents zero and the tail represents one. Zeros and ones are the binary language in which computers talk. In classical computing, a coin toss represents either a head or a tail, a clear choice between zero and a one. And please do note, information is stored in bits. So far, simple, right? This is where quantum computing gets tricky. In quantum computing, when you flip a coin, it can actually be both head and tail simultaneously. Yes, you heard that right. That is, it can be a state of both zeros and one at the same time until it's measured. And also remember, in quantum computing, information is encoded in qubits. This mind-bending phenomenon where an object can be in multiple states at once, it's called superposition. To put it into perspective, it's like the Schrodinger's famous thought experiment, the Schrodinger's cat. An imaginary cat that is placed inside a box with a poison. A cat can be both alive and dead. We can't know its state until we open the box. And now let's explore another crucial concept in quantum mechanics, entanglement. Superpositions and entanglement are two most important concepts in quantum mechanics. Imagine you're standing in front of a mirror. You flip a coin in your hand. Regardless of the distance, the reflection always mirrors the state of the actual coin. This is because the reflection is simply a projection of the coin state onto the mirror. If you know which side of the coin is up, you will always know which side of the reflection is up. This is not exactly entanglement, but it is a very good way to understand the concept. In entanglement, two or more particles are linked together in such a way that they share the same state. So when you measure one qubit, we would know the state of the other qubit even though they are great distance apart. In fact, there is no theoretical limit to the number of particles that can be entangled. The number of entanglements is only limited by the number of particles that we have. When you have more than three entanglement, it's called the multipartite entanglement. However, it is important to note that entanglement becomes more difficult to measure and control as the number of particles increases. Entanglement is a very promising area of research in quantum mechanics. It has the potential to be used for applications such as quantum teleportation. Quantum computers take advantage of superposition and entanglement to perform computations in a radically different way compared to our classical computers. They can process vast amount of information simultaneously, exploring multiple possibilities, stack of complex simulations, cryptography, optimization, machine learning tasks, and potential solutions all at once. So the next time you hold a coin in your hand, take a moment to reflect on the awe-inspiring power of quantum computing. The ability of a qubit to be a zero or a one opens up a world of possibilities to conquer the most formidable challenges we face today. If you like the content that I'm covering, please do consider subscribing. I'll really appreciate that, my friend. I wish for you to stay hungry and stay curious. Take care. A random shout out to our community members to show my appreciation for your support. Thank you.